Hi friends, uh, one of the most asked question in the recent days is that as a migrant to a new country, it is always difficult for us to understand the, the, the complex tax system in Netherlands. So to help us understand the tax system in Netherlands, we have with us Ms. Diana, uh, a tax advisor with more than 30 years of experience in this domain. And not to miss, she also works with a lot of expat clients and especially with a lot of Indians as well. So that makes it easy for her to understand our perspective, our doubts and questions. Let's get into today's episode. Hi Diana, thank you so much for giving us your time. Uh, so how is the, the basic tax system of Netherlands has been set up? Thank you for having me here, uh, first of all. Um, well, the system is not that difficult actually. Um, for your personal income tax, uh, you do it just once per year, uh, when the fiscal year has been finished. The fiscal year in the Netherlands is the same as the calendar year. So it's from the 1st of January until the end of December. And after that, you have a few times, uh, a few months, sorry, a few months to uh, submit your form. Mm -hmm. The due date is the 1st of May. Okay. So if you think you will be entitled to a refund, it's always uh, advisable to submit the form ASAP so that you will have uh, your refund before the 1st of July. So the answer from the belasting deans is what you mean by the, uh, the final assessment, right? Not the final assessment yet. Mm -hmm. um, the tax office uh, also sends out uh, preliminary assessments. Okay, okay. Then they don't check the content of the form yet. They okay. just see the numbers that you have filled in. They said, okay, based on these numbers, you're entitled to a certain refund. We already give you that refund. And then later on, we will check the form to see if anything is missing or if it wasn't correct uh, filled okay. in. So that, and then uh, when they do that, then you will get the final uh, tax assessment. In the Netherlands, you can do it all digitally online. Okay. Um, for that, you need a uh, DTID. Yeah. That's a an code, um, a password and a login name. And with that, you can go online and yeah, have all your tax issues arranged there. When the tax office has um, submitted or has issued the final assessment and you don't agree with that for some reason so you can always file an objection this objection can also be done uh, digitally okay with okay. the DGID. having said that uh, so what are the tax brackets the income tax brackets in netherlands we have two brackets uh, these days uh, the first one is a quite large one mm -hmm. it's up to 70,000 euros a little bit more and all the income that is included in that bracket will be taxed against a rate of 36.93 percent okay, okay. and all above that in the second bracket uh, will be taxed against, uh, against a rate of 39.5 percent okay uh, okay almost so then half of it that answers why our net salary is quite low even though we, hi we earn even higher than 100,000 euros or so yeah that's true unfortunately yeah <laughs> the, the tax rates in the Netherlands are quite high unfortunately okay. so whenever we talk about taxes I usually come across this term box one box two and box three yeah exactly. but I always try to understand what those boxes are but it's always a nightmare for me so can you help me with understanding what are those boxes are and what is included in them I will try to explain it uh, <laughs> in a nutshell. Yeah, we have this three box system. Box one is about income, income from employment, from business, entrepreneurs, uh, freelance, whatever, about uh, the property that's used as a main resident mm -hmm. and about deductions. Box two is uh, about income coming from um, a BV or an NV, which you can compare to a uh, private limited or a public limited. Okay. And then with income uh, is meant dividends or um, capital gain when you sell the shares. Okay. And box three, it's the most complex one, it's about your assets, income okay. from assets. And not only in the Netherlands, but all around the world. Okay, like the, the home rent or something like that? Like um, yeah, well, like investments, savings accounts, uh, but also just your normal uh, pay account, um, um, shares, not the shares from your BV, uh, property that you rent out, mm -hmm. uh, crypto uh, coins, all kinds of Share market assets. investments or any kind of assets. Oh, uh, okay, then for that matter, uh, the share market investments that we are making uh, will also be accounted under box three, right? Yeah, exactly. And if we own a company and we have a share out of it, then that comes under box two. Box two, indeed. That's ah, the difference. Okay, yeah. okay. The difference is in possession. Um, when you have less than 5%, it will box three. Okay. When it's more than 5%, box two. 
in box 1 you are talking something about the deductions right the tax deductions so what are the uh, items that can be, that are tax deductible in netherlands at least in box 1 there are a few um, the first one the biggest one is the interest on the markets you pay uh, for the house that you live okay, in okay. there are other deductions like uh, medical costs that are not uh, covered by the health insurance yeah. you have uh, traveling costs for work commuting costs um, donations to charity and you can have um, pri a private uh, pension scheme for mm -hmm. which you pay premiums those are deductible and you can have this AOV verzekering it's an insurance for getting uh, disabled and uh, lose income okay. um, but the main one and, and that is uh, quite common is the interest on the markets for your uh, own house okay. uh, when you buy a house in the Netherlands and you use it as your primary residence okay you can deduct the interest that you pay on the market. It's only the interest, not the redemption, but only the interest. The first year when you buy the house, there are some additional costs uh, for notary, mortgage advisor. Some of those costs are also deductible. Usually as an expat, uh, we are relying on this 30% ruling a lot because that increases our net income as such. So who would be eligible for the 30% ruling? Yeah, it's in a very nice uh, ruling. Um, it's meant for uh, high-skilled migrants. Um, and uh, yeah, basically it gives you an, an, a tax-free income of 30% of your income. Okay. Um, there are a few conditions. One is that you, like I said before, you have to be a high-skilled migrant mm -hmm. and you have to be hired from abroad. The high-skilled migrant, when you um, when your income is at least uh, 41,000 euros, mm -hmm. then you're automatically be in high scale, uh, high skilled migrant. Okay. So that is one condition. The um, other one, yeah. high from abroad, it's a more complex one, um, but mainly um, it means that um, if you take your starting day, the first day of work, mm -hmm. you in have Netherlands. To, in the Netherlands, okay. exactly, you have to look at uh, the two years, the previous. Uh, two years okay. and in those uh, two years for 60 months at mm -hmm. least 60 months you have to live have lived at least 150 kilometers from the Dutch border ah okay okay, okay. so to give a mm, small example to explain a little bit more uh, let's say um, you come to the Netherlands uh, in a certain year and you will be registered on the the 1st of September okay. of that year and the next year you start somewhere in April okay. with the first day um, of work, okay. then um, you take the two years before the first day of work mm -hmm. and then you can see that, um, uh, the, that you at least have lived 60 months okay. abroad. Uh, there are a lot of cases where students who move here uh, to do their masters, it can be one year masters or two years or sometimes like people move here with their dependents. So they will get a job and they will apply for 30% ruling and then they stand a chance, may or may not. So there is always a confusion between do I get a 30% ruling or not. So this answers the question that the start date should be, yeah, the two years before the start date, the 16 months should be, uh, they should have lived outside yeah, Netherlands. That, exactly. answers, the, that yeah. answers the question perfectly, yeah. thanks. Yeah. There's one exemption. Mm -hmm. um, when you do your PhD uh, in the Netherlands and you will find a job uh, within one year after you uh, uh, promoted, mm -hmm. you can also request for the 30% ruling, but it's owning only with your PhD, it's not with your master. Okay, money. by promotion you mean the doctorate graduation, The doctorate right? graduation, okay. exactly. We also have this tax partner kind of thing that is, I always tend to hear this one uh, about the tax partners. So what does that exactly mean? Mm -hmm. Who are considered as tax partners? Yeah, fiscal partners is a okay, term the that we part. use, but uh, okay. I know what you mean. You, th This is a term that is used for the mostly for the income tax return. Mm -hmm. And um, it gives you some benefits. Um, now, who are fiscal partners? You are a fiscal partner by law if you are married. Mm -hmm. If you have a um, registered partnership, mm -hmm. if you have a child together, so if you're not married but just living together, if you have a child together, if you buy a house together, mm -hmm. if you have this uh, notarial cohabitation contract and there's one other thing when you are fiscal partners that is when you have a pension scheme from your employment and you point out your partner as your partner for the pension scheme as okay, well so okay. that he or she also get a part of your pension okay then you're automatically fiscal partners what does this mean um, for the income tax it gives you some benefits mm -hmm. it means that you can 
allocate deductions between the two of you okay. in the most best beneficial way. For instance, if you have the markets on the house, on the primary residence, your partner has a much higher income, okay. it's more beneficial to give him or her the total refund, the okay. total deduction, because mm -hmm. then the refund will be higher. So how about capital gains tax in Netherlands? For instance, I own a property and then I'm selling it off and then I'm making a profit of like another 50,000 or 100,000 euros extra. So how, how is that handled and is that being taxed or not? No, actually it isn't. In the Netherlands, we don't have anything like capital gain tax, not yet. Um, so if you have this situation, Mm -hmm. and uh, you make a profit of uh, 150k uh, mm -hmm. and you put it on your bank account okay. it will be just um, taxed as all the other assets in box mm -hmm. 3 okay. on the value of your bank account um, which might be a good idea to put it there because the, um, the bank accounts are taxed much lower than uh, okay. property so reinvesting in property would for Dutch uh, purposes, tax purposes, not be a very wise idea. Mm -hmm. However, only if you use it for property abroad. Okay. Because property abroad uh, will be exempted in uh, the Dutch income tax return from tax uh, due to the treaties okay. the Netherlands has with other countries. In all those treaties, it's said that uh, property is only taxed in a country where it's established because mm -hmm. you are paying taxes already there. Which means that if it uh, would also be taxed in the Dutch income tax return, mm -hmm. you will be taxed uh, twice. Two times, okay. And, uh, that and then we can claim for a credit back. You mean? Then you will get a tax credit for being double taxed. So ah, still, okay. you have to include it in the Dutch income tax return. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you can request this uh, tax credit for being double taxed. And then basically, the property abroad won't be taxed in the Netherlands. Ah, okay. In a nutshell, then probably if I own a property in India, I don't have to pay two times tax. I just have to pay the property tax in India. And here, probably I'll be taxed, but I can get a claim the credit back, right? Exactly. That's ah, how okay. it works. Yeah. There's uh, an, another benefit from having 30% ruling. Okay. Um, if you uh, are granted to use that, then you uh, won't have to include box 3 in your income tax return. And talking about allowances, like the, the low income, like the allowances for the low income group or for students for that matter and for housing allowances, I also understand that that is also being handled by the Belasting Dienst, so the, the tax agency. So how does that work and what are the things that one should be aware of uh, in that regard? Yeah, indeed. Uh, the tax office, the Blossom is uh, also taking care of allowances. Mm -hmm. uh, however, they have a special department for that. It's called Toeslagen. Okay. And uh, we're talking about um, huurtoeslag, rental mm -hmm. allowance, um, zorgtoeslag, that is an, an allowance uh, healthcare for... Healthcare allowance, yeah. Yeah, healthcare okay. allowance. Um, kindgebonden budget, that's when you have a child and a yeah. very low yeah. income and the daycare allowances. Okay. Um, the first three allowances, healthcare, uh, rental and kindgebonden budget is when you have a very low income. Mm -hmm. uh, then you, yeah, you still have to pay your rent and you still have to pay your premium for your health insurance. But the government says, okay, in that case, we will help you a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so the department toeslagen is depending on the information from the department income tax mm -hmm. they will use your taxable income as base for uh, the allowance uh, there are um, uh, brackets okay. um, for every yeah, bracket of income okay, okay. and the lower the income the more allowance you get okay. daycare allowance is a different one um, it's also based on the height of your income yeah. but also with a high income, you still are entitled to a daycare allowance. So as a newcomer to Netherlands, uh, so what is your advice about hiring a tax consultant? Is, it, is that something that I can do it on my own? Or do you suggest that only a tax advisor can do all these things in the right way at the right time so that we are not getting, uh, so that we don't face any hassles anymore? Well, especially for the first year, I would advise you to hire a tax advisor or a tax um, accountant. Because in the first year, you have to submit the so-called M form. Okay. The M stands for migration. It's a very large form with about 85 questions. Oh. It's quite complex. Okay. Um, maybe when you are a student, uh, then it will be a little bit easier because then there's no income. Mm -hmm. But if you have an income, if you come to the Netherlands as a high-skilled migrant, yes, for that year, I would advise you that. The other years, um, the tax office is using pre-filled uh, forms. Okay. 
after the 1st of March of every tax year, the tax office already have uh, the form ready on, okay. on your portal at the website. And a lot of information is already pre-filled, like the information from your employment, um, the value of your house, um, some yeah. box tree income. Mm -hmm. In that situation, I would say, just try it yourself. Okay. Just check all the information that's there. Uh, fill in the missing parts and then submit a form. That okay. can be done quite easily yourself. If it is like a straightforward income and we can do it on our own, but do you think if some additional uh, components has to be filed or submitted, then, then it's advice to go for Yeah, advisor. it might be smart to hire Especially you. during uh, uh, the mortgage and those kind of filings, it is good to go with the tax advisor. Yeah. yeah? The first year at least when you uh, buy a okay. house because there are more costs uh, deductible and you need to know which mm -hmm. cost is. Okay. Um, when you have possessions abroad, property abroad, it might be a wise thing. And when you have a lot of deductions. Okay. Uh, like we said before, if you don't agree with a decision from the tax office, you can uh, object quite easily online. Mm -hmm. However, if it's, if it's going to be difficult, if, if it's complex, in that case, I also advise you to hire a tax consultant or a tax accountant. Mm -hmm. So how much that would cost to hire a tax advisor or a tax lawyer for that matter? On an average, at least. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah, it depends a little bit on yeah whether you hire someone from an, the big five. Okay. Uh, EY, uh, whatever. McKinsey, yeah. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are very expensive, of course. Uh, they have an hourly rate of um, um, at least 200 euros per hour. Oh. But there are a lot of small offices um, um, that have much uh, interest, more interesting uh, fees like uh, between... 75 and 150 euros per tax return so okay, that's okay. more doable so that's that's for the uh, per tax return not for per hour basis or it depends a, a bit on the office but basically that's per tax return indeed okay okay so what happens if uh, we don't file the taxes on time are there any penalty that we have to pay or what kind of consequences would happen yeah unfortunately there is indeed a penalty the tax office is quite strict about this okay in most cases, they will send you an invitation to submit your tax return. It's really called invitation. Um, and then uh, yeah, you have um, the due date, uh, the 1st of May, or when you have an extension, the 1st of September, or maybe even a year later when you mm -hmm. hire a tax advisor. If you don't do it in time, first the tax office will send you a reminder mm -hmm. And saying, okay, we didn't receive it, please submit it ASAP. If you don't do it then, then you will get an, an official reminder. It's mm -hmm. called aanmaning. Mm -hmm. And then you still have 10 working days mm -hmm. to submit a form. If you don't do it in time then, um, the tax office will just issue a tax bill estimating an, an amount of income and an amount to pay. And they will add a penalty of uh, about... Um, yeah, I think it's now 385 euros to ah, it, okay. and you will have to pay it. That's for the first time. If the second time, next year, you have the same issue, you don't submit your form in time, the penalty will be even higher, and it can go up to uh, 5,000 euros. Oh my God, even the first time itself, that's quite expensive at least. It is indeed, <laughs> yeah. For that money, you can hire a tax advisor and uh, have it uh, done for you. It uh, will be cheaper indeed. Thank you so much for sharing a lot of detailed insights about tax system in Netherlands and that already shows your expertise in this area. So thanks again for uh, giving us your time. Yeah, thank you so much as well. It was uh, really a pleasure. And um, well, yeah, you know where to find me if you need any advice or if you have questions. Definitely, definitely indeed.